بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله معلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي Continuing with our journey through our topics pertaining to good character and etiquettes that a Muslim needs to improve their morals and to beautify themselves with good etiquette and adab in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be. Today with, with the beautiful characteristic which is ever so important known as Al-Ithar. Ithar is a beautiful characteristic. What it means is that you put somebody or something above and before your preferences and your likes. So you prefer somebody above and over yourself, right? And it pertains to people, the creation, and also it pertains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ithar istilahan, technically, the ulama, they say, taqdim al-ghayr ala nafs fi naf'i lahu, is to put somebody before you in terms of benefiting them before you benefit yourself. And to remove harm from them before you remove the harm from yourselves. And it's the furthest expression, the greatest expression that you can do of brotherhood and sisterhood. This, to put somebody before you in terms of preferences and likes, and to put somebody before you in terms of saving their life and saving them from harm before and above yourself. So it's something which is truly love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's something which is the highest pinnacle in the terms of brotherhood and sisterhood. In the Quran and the Sunnah we have Targhib, Targhibu fil Ithar, yani the encouragement to Ithar, the encouragement to this principle, Ithar. Ithar meaning putting somebody or something above and before yourself. Awwalan fil Quran al Kareem. Firstly, to look in the Quran. So the scholars they say, Al-Ithar min mahasin al-akhlaq al-Islamiyya Ithar, it is from the best characteristics that you find in Islam that a person can beautify themselves with فَوْهَ مَرْتَبَةٌ عَالِيَةٌ مِنْ مَرَاتِبِ الْبَذَلِ It is a high level of spending It's a high level of charity لِذَا أَثْنَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِهِ Due to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the people that embody this characteristic of Al-Ithar Again, Ithar is to put somebody or something above and before yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and explaining that the people that have ithar they are muflihun, they are the ones who are truly successful. In Surah Al Hashr, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pertaining to the two groups of the companions of the Prophet. So you have a group of the companions that left Mecca in the time of the Prophet when they were being persecuted and they traveled all the way to Medina. These were known as the Muhajirun. Okay, the Muhajirun, those who left Mecca to go to Medina to find peace and to find um, security in Medina as to being opposed to being oppressed in Mecca. Then you have the group in Al Medina that received them and that helped to take care of them. They were known as the Al Ansar. So this verse is uh, pertaining to them in Surah Al Hashr. Those who settled in the land, meaning in Medina, before those who came to them. يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ حَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They love those who migrated to them. They love those who migrated for the sake of their religion from Mecca to Medina. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا And they find no difficulty within their chests, within, within themselves. No difficulty in the fact that they gave out of whatever they could give to help the muhajirun to help those who came to Medina. And they would prefer those muhajirun above and, be, above and beyond themselves, meaning that whatever needs the muhajirun had, they would fulfill those needs, even if it meant that the Ansar themselves would have to go without. And the ones that are able to remove this uh, miser, I can't even say the word miserness from themselves, this um, this greediness from themselves, the ones who can remove that from themselves, then they are truly the successful ones. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, You will not taste piety, you will not get true piety until you spend of that which you love. 
وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ And that which you spent in charity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is full aware and all knowing of what you have spent. Sheikh Sa'di, one of the famous scholars of tafsir in the, um, in the last 50 years or so, passed away. Uh, may Allah have mercy upon him. He was famous for tafsir and other Islamic sciences. He says some beautiful words pertaining to this topic and to this verse. He says, يعني, meaning, لن تنالوا وتدركوا البر. You won't fulfill and get righteousness. الذي هو اسم جامع للخيرات, which is a universal or a general noun covering all types of good. You won't get hold of bir. Okay, bir is the word which was used in the Quran. You won't get hold of this bir, which is all forms of goodness. وهو طريق الموصل إلى الجنة, and it is the path that leads you to Jannah. حتى تنفق مما تحبون until you spend from that which you love, that which you daily love. You have to spend that to get this bir. من أطيب أموالكم وأزكاها. You spend from the wealth which is most beloved to you, and the purest forms of wealth. فإن النفقة من طيب محبوب للنفوس من أكبر أدلة على سماحة النفس. For verily spending from this type of wealth which is love to you and is dear to you, it is from the greatest of evidences that you have a high and purified soul. You mean your, your soul is of a high status and it's pure, okay, and it's lofty. And that you have embodied all types of good characteristics within your soul. And that your soul has within it mercy and softness. ومن أدل الدلائل ومن أدل الدلائل المحبة الله and it is from the most evident of evidences that you love Allah سبحانه وتعالى so he's talking about the fact that you spend from that which you love you prefer other people to have your wealth at times rather than having it yourself that which is extra for you and that which is love to you you spend it in the path of pleasing Allah سبحانه وتعالى so all of this it shows that your your soul is of a lofty nature and it's it's soft and it's not hard and you're showing that you prefer Allah's love above the love of yourself and the love of your wealth. وَتَقْدِيمْ مَحَبَّتِهِ عَلَى مَحَبَّتِ الْأَمْوَالِ And preferring Allah's love over the preference of your wealth. أَلَّتِي جُبِلَتَ النُّفُوسِ عَلَى قُوِّتَ التَّعَلُّقُ بِهَا So wealth in nature, in, in, in normal situations, the human being is embodied with, have, with loving wealth. The human being, it's put them put within them naturally that they love wealth for the fact that you can give up this wealth that you love for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a great proof that your soul loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فمن آثر محبة الله على محبة نفسه فقد بلغ ذروة العليا من الكمال so the person that is able to prefer Allah's love over the preference of his own love whether that be wealth or other things the person can give them those things up for the sake of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this person has reached the peak of uh, completion with regards to their iman and the purity of their soul. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَأَحْسَنَ إِلَىٰ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ And likewise the one who spends of good that they have and they are good to the creation أَحْسَنَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْهِ وَوَفَّقَهُ أَعْمَالًا وَأَخْلَاقًا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be good to that person in return and will enable them to do good deeds لَا تَحْصَلْ بِدُونِ حَدِ الْحَالَةِ the per Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enable this person to do good deeds and to have good character based upon what they are spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would not have been able to obtain those good deeds or that good character except through this. So all of this the Imam he says these important words showing us that the ones who spend uh, from what they love because they prefer the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and above what they have then they have reached a high level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's highly recommended that this topic of ithar is established within the Muslims, right? Ithar is to prefer others above and ab uh, before yourself. So there'll be times in your life where you may really need something, but you also know that somebody else needs it just as much as you do, or maybe more than you. So for the sake of your love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sake of your love for getting to Jannah and for the sake of your love for being rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're willing to give what you have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to others. And this is a this is a declaration from within of how strong your iman is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a quick example from the sunnah showing this ithar, this preference to others. 
uh, in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-Ash'ariyina idha armanu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking about a tribe known as the, uh, the people of al-Ash'ariya. Al-Ash'ariyina idha armanu. That these tribe, these people in Medina, when they go to war and they kind of, you know, become poor due to the fact that they had to go to war, إِذَا أَرْمَلُوا فِي الْغَزْوِ أَوْ قَلَّ طَعَامَ إِيَّالِهِمْ بِالْمَدِينَةِ Or, in a general state, their wealth becomes low amongst them, the tribe. Okay, their families, they don't have much. جَمَعُوا مَا كَانَ إِنْدَهُمْ فِي ثَوْبٍ وَاحِدٍ What they do, they would come together and they would gather all of the food stuff and the essential items that they have in their houses, they would put them in one place. ثُمَّ اَقْتَصَمُوهُ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي إِنَاءٍ وَاحِدٍ بِالسَّوِيَّةِ And then they would distribute equally amongst the members of that tribe all of that which they had gathered from food and essential items for the houses فَهُمْ مِنِّي وَأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ So the Prophet ﷺ said they are from me and I am from them because the Prophet ﷺ he truly loved this characteristic which was found in them the fact that they would come together and even though they owned certain items they were willing to distribute it to others amongst them in their tribe in their community that also needed those items so they would prefer other people, they would have ithar. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said from Abu Harir radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in Sahih al-Muslim طعام واحد يكفي الاثنين The food of one person can suffice two. وطعام الاثنين يكفي الأربعة And the food of two people can suffice four. وطعام الأربعة يكفي الثمانية And the food of four people can suffice eight. So here the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us that we should learn that we have enough, that we can share what we have within our possessions. And that's the reality of our lives, that we have so much, we have so much wealth, but what's taking place is we're overspending. We're buying and above that which we need. And that's why we're finding it difficult. We've gotten so accustomed to buying and enjoying our material wealth that we find it very difficult to give. We're over-purchasing our houses, you know, the cupboards are bursting at the seams, so to speak. They're full with clothes and items that we don't even wear or use. Wherever you look in the house, you find so many things that we don't really use. However, we still want to go and buy more. So the Sahaba and the righteous, they're not like this. They think, okay, I have extra wealth. I can give it to people that they can benefit from. They do ithar, ithar preferring others above and, them, uh, above and before themselves. So for example, what we buy from meals every week when we treat ourselves, let's say for example we buy a £10 meal. Why can't we sometimes go out and buy the £6 option and the £4 that we save we give it to the poor? This is ithar. You get the lesser option so that you can prefer to give money to the poorer people that need it, right? We should train ourselves to be charitable like this so that we can get the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more we think about helping other people, the more our hearts will start to soften and the more our souls will start to be purified because now we're not being from those who are greedy, right? And not only feeding their souls all the time, rather they're trying to feed the Iman, thinking about the benefit of other people, other Muslims. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, a very important hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِهِمْ وَتَرَاحِمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ جَسَدِ إِذَا اشْتَقْهَا مِنْهُ عُضْوًا تَدَاءَ إِلَيْهِ سَائِرُ الْجَسَدِ بِسَهْلِ وَالْحُمَّة the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari that the example and the similitude of the believers is like that of one body, pertaining to how they care for one another, how they love one another, and how they have emotional attachment to one another. It's like one body. If one part of the body suffers an ailment, suffers a pain, then the rest of the body spends the night in sleeplessness and in fever. So it may be that your foot is in pain, but the rest of the body reacts to it. Likewise, the believers are like so. Wherever we are in the world, we try to take care of the believers wherever they may be, even if they're thousands of miles away, because their pain is our pain, their joy is our joy, their happiness is our happiness, their suffering is our suffering. So we're like one body, we try to have ithar, we try to give from what we have and what is important to, important to us, so that we can fulfill the needs of those of our Muslim brothers wherever they be in the world, Muslim brothers and sisters. So that's ithar pertaining to the creation, right? That you give from what you have so that you can help people to live uh, a better life, so that you can help people to fulfill the needs that they need to fulfill. Or you give from yourself, from your time, and maybe even your physical being at times to defend people, 
to defend any harm that may be coming towards a person, a believer, even though you yourself know that you're going to be harmed in this situation. This is also ithar. Another type of ithar, and it's extremely important, we touched upon it, is that the ithar pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al ithar yata'allaqu bil khaliq, the ithar pertaining to the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa afdul al anwa al ithar, and it is the best type of ithar, wa alaha manzilatan, and the highest in terms of status, preferring Allah's pleasure over to your own pleasure. Wa arfa'uha qadran, and the highest of it in status. وَمِنْ عَلَامَاتِهِ and from its signs أَنْ يَفْعَلَ الْمَرْءُ كُلَّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَيَأْمَرُهُ بِهِ That a person does everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the person to do and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for the person to do then the person is going to go ahead and do it وَإِنْ كَانَ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ مَكْرُوهًا إِلَّا نَفْسِ الْعَبْدِ Even if it be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering you or telling you to do something which within yourself is very difficult for you to do and you don't really like to do it. For example, in the cold winter days, you may not have heating in the house, but you know you have to make wudu. So it's hard for you to make wudu. It's hard for the men to get up and go to the masjid to pray fajr on the cold winter days. But they do it. Why do they do it? They do it because they're choosing and preferring Allah's love and Allah's happiness with them over their own comfort and their own happiness. So this is something which is to be sought after. وَإِنْ يَتْرُكَ مَا يَكْرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَيَنْهِ عَنْهُ And to leave alone that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to stay away from. وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحَبَّبًا إِلَى الْمَرْءِ And even if that thing be something which you actually like and you actually love. تَشْتَهِيهِ نَفْسُهُ وَتَرْغَبُ فِيهِ It could be something that the soul is desiring after. It could be something that you really want to do. An example of this is, for example, you know, uh, parents can understand this. Uh, you have children or it could be maybe you don't have children it could be your spouse it could be your husband or your wife they're begging you to get them Netflix let's get a Netflix subscription and as a parent as a husband or a wife uh, you know that getting Netflix is not going to increase the iman of the people in the house rather it's going to destroy the iman of the people in the house but the children are saying to you but Baba, Mama everyone else has it the cousins have it my friends have it you know we're the only strange people that don't have it and you know, the wife might be saying, or the husband might be saying, I get so bored, I need to have some outlet with regards to Netflix TV shows. And you loving your children or your spouse so much, it really hurts you from within to say no to them. So here's the thing, are you going to give ithar now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or are you going to give ithar now to the creation? Are you going to prefer Allah above and before everyone else? Or are you going to prefer the creation above and before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So surely you should choose the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that man taraka shay'an lillah awadahu khayran minhu that whoever leaves a thing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will replace it with that which is better so you might have left that then Allah will bring you joy and happiness into your household with other means which are more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prayer pressure in society at times is very strong wherever you go whether it's work, college, wherever you may be such strong peer pressure for you to behave in a particular way and to you to do things, right, to please the people. So now here again, are you going to make the choice of ithar, pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, putting him first, or are you going to make the choice of pleasing yourself and pleasing the people? Because you may lose friends, right, if you don't do what the friends are pushing you to do. You may lose the, the inner circles of being invited to your colleagues' gatherings, etc. at work because you don't fit in with them, because you're not choosing to do what they ask you to do. You prefer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but look at the hadith in Tirmidhi. The Prophet said, Man iltamasa ridha Allah bi sakhti nas radiya Allahu anhu wa adda anhu an nas. That whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if that entails that the people are going to be displeased with him or her, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes pleased with that person and causes the people to be pleased with him or her also. But the converse is also true. Woman وَمَنْ إِلْتَمَسَ رِضَّ النَّاسِ بِسَخْتِ اللَّهِ سَخْتَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْخَتَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ And whoever on the converse side seeks the pleasure of the people through the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah becomes displeased with that person and in the end causes the people to be displeased with that person also. So we should always put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first because that will always bring us a benefit. It may not be seen right away but it will be seen eventually. Choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and we will always be happy. 
Look how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was with regards to Ithar once in Bukhari, it's narrated. And we know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't have much clothing, right? His clothing was very bare, very scarce, and at times would be ripped more than often. So one time a woman, she made a burda for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A burda is a type of outer garment, very beautifully made. So she came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she gave it to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took it and accepted it because he was in need of it. In fact some narrations say that he used it as his izar, his, uh, um, his covering for the lower part of the body. So he was in front of his companions and one of the companions Radiallahu Anhum, he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wearing it and he said, Ya Rasulullah how beautiful that is, can I have it? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately took it and gave it to the person. Later on, the companions, when the Prophet ﷺ wasn't there, they blamed this companion. Why did you take it from the Prophet ﷺ? You know that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he is asked, and even if he has a need for a thing, if he's asked for it, he never says no. Why did you take it? The person said, I wanted it to be my burial shroud. I wanted it to be that which I am buried in. So look from it though, how the Prophet ﷺ would never say no. He would always give, even if it was something that was important to him, that he needed it. If there was somebody else that would ask for it or needed it, the Prophet ﷺ would give it. Such a high status of character. In fact, it's mentioned about the Prophet ﷺ that he would never say la. You know la meaning no, right, in Arabic. The Prophet ﷺ never said la, they say, except for in saying la ilaha illallah. You say the la, the no, in that there is none to be worshipped, there is no God to be worshipped in truth, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only time that the Prophet ﷺ would say la. That's an exaggeration, of course. But the Prophet ﷺ was like that, he would hardly ever say no when he knew that he could help somebody even if he himself needed something. One time, the Prophet ﷺ, he saw Abu Hurairah anhu, who was in extreme hunger, right? To the extent that the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Hurairah and other companions at times they would be so hungry, they would tie stones to their, to their bellies to try and keep the the um, bloating of the stomach at a minimum based upon the fact that it's empty and they're very hungry subhanallah so one time the prophet sallallahu alaihi passes by abu huraira and he realizes that abu huraira is extremely hungry so the prophet sallallahu alaihi brings him to his house and he knows that he has some milk in the house and you know that the prophet sallallahu alaihi would go days in his house without having anything really to eat or drink so the prophet sallallahu alaihi has milk in his house and he brings abu huraira radiyallahu anhu but before he gives to Abu Huraira this milk, he says to Abu Huraira, I want you to go and take this milk to Ahlul Sufa. Ahlul Sufa were a group of people that they had absolutely nothing and they would spend their time sitting in the masjid, not out of choice, out of the fact that they had no means of making a livelihood. And they would rely upon the charity of the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims. So, the Pro so he was sent to Ahlul Sufa and Abu Huraira himself is super hungry, super starving. So Abu Huraira would never say no to the Prophet Sallallahu of course, because he's from the companions, he's from the Sahaba, the generation that would always do what Allah wants and do what the Prophet Sallallahu wants above and before what, they, what their own souls are commanding them to do. So the, he's super hungry, he's starving. And the Prophet Sallallahu has commanded him, go and take this vessel of milk to those companions. And they were around 70, I think. So Abu Hurairah is taking this and he's thinking to himself, SubhanAllah, I'm going to be starving. Like, what is going to be left for me? Anyway, he gives it to the companions, each of them take from it. And then he brings it back to the Prophet ﷺ. And somehow, miraculously, miraculously there is something left within it. And then the Prophet ﷺ drinks from it. And then he gives it to Abu Hurairah and he says to him, drink. The Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Hurairah, drink. Abu Hurairah drank till his stomach was full. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, continue to drink. He said, I can't, Ya Rasulullah. He said, no, continue. And he drank again. Some points of benefit from this narration. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ did ithar to Abu Hurairah. That was the Prophet ﷺ's milk in his house. And of course, him and his household, as I mentioned, they hardly had anything to eat or drink. Yeah, when he saw that Abu Huraira was super hungry and starving, he gave this to Abu Huraira. But before he gave it to Abu Huraira, Huraira radiallahu anhu, he wanted to teach him ithar. So he sent him to go and give it to the companions of Ahl Sufa that were sitting in the masjid. And also we take a lesson from this hadith that at times that we know in Islam that the sunnah is that you only eat enough or drink enough to fill a third of your belly, right? The Prophet said, the Prophet ﷺ said to eat and drink to a third 
of your stomach and if you need to eat uh, and that's if you need to eat and drink more than just a few morsels however from this hadith some of the ulama like Shaykh Uthaymin ta'ala they said it's a proof that at times you can eat more you can eat more whereby your belly will be full more sadly for us it's the norm that we eat till our bellies are full but the ulama and the righteous they're saying at times you can eat to where your belly becomes close to being full why because Abu Huraira when he was drinking the milk the Prophet Sallallahu said to him drink more drink more drink more even though Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was saying I am full there's a narration in the book Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya of Ibn Kathir the great book of Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahu ta'ala where he mentions that in the battle of Tabuk in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam three of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam they were badly wounded right they were close to dying and people were coming and looking for the wounded to try to save those who could, they could save so they came across these companions and they brought water to them to try to quench their thirst to help them to recover so when water was given to the first companion the companion refused it he said no 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 go and look for so and so that person there needs it more than I do so they went with the water to the second companion the companion said no 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 I'm not going to take it that person there the third person needs it more than I do so they took it to the third person but by the time they got to the third person the third person had passed away so they tried to get back to the second person he also passed away they tried to get back to the first person the first person also passed away and so this is how amazing the companions of the Prophet وسلم, would be in terms of ithar, in terms of preferring others above and before themselves. Why would they do that? Because they knew that this was something that Allah loved. They knew that this was something that would guarantee for them to get into Jannah. They knew that this is something that would purify their souls and their hearts. Imam al bayhaqi in Shu'ab al-Iman and Imam al-Hakim in al-Mustadrak, they mentioned the following narration from Umar, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah. Who said, Oh, the Ali Rajalin min Ashabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rats a shirt. That one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at one time was gifted the head of a sheep. Fakal in a ahi fulan and wa ayal who ahwaja ila hada minna. He said to his family that, You know what? The neighbor down the road and their family, our brother in Islam and our sisters in Islam, they're in more need of this than we are. So send it to them. And it was sent to them. فَلَمْ يَزِلْ يَبْعَثُ بِهِ وَاحِدٌ إِلَىٰ آخَرَ حَتَّى تَدَاوَلَهَا أَحْلُ سَبَّةِ أَبْيَاتِ So this would take place that it would go to another person's house in the community and they would think of somebody else that would be in more need of it and they would send it to them. And it took around 70 houses before it ended up being in a place where it would be cooked and eaten. 70 houses one after the other, the people would just pass it on thinking of somebody that would be in more need. And it was this wherein the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealed in Surah Al-Hashr وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمُ لَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And they prefer others above and before themselves even if it means, even if they had the need for it themselves. right? And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with describing how pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with this type of behavior, the type of ithar. To give you some real life examples that I myself have experienced I had a teacher who was teaching me a few basic things uh, many years ago and he wasn't very well to do himself. One time he came to my place and he told me that you know um, he actually had to sleep in his car for a few weeks and the reason he had to sleep in his car for a few weeks because a friend of his, a brother of his in Islam had a debt that he wanted to pay off, my teacher wanted to pay off even though he himself had close to very little money. So what did my teacher do? My teacher took a debt in order to help pay off the debt of this person that was trying to pay off their debt and then my teacher ended up sleeping in his car for a period of time to, to try to save money for themselves. So these are real life examples of how people would make ithar of other people, other people's needs before their own needs. Yeah, it's super difficult, it's super rare, it's something that probably most of us won't be able to do on this scale but we should try to do it on any little scale that we can with our time with our skills, with our money, with our good company even. People need company, we should give them our good company. We might be busy, we should set a, if people need to be with us, we should make time for them inshallah. An example in real life of um, the ithar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preferring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above yourself and your needs. So another teacher of mine, may Allah preserve him and bless him, he was one time te teaching us Quran. 
And this teacher used to have severe back pains, severe back aches, I mean really severe, to the extent that at times he would just have to lay down on the ground, on the ground, and he would, tears would be coming out, out of his eyes due to the pain. He wouldn't vocalize the statement of pain, but we could tell because his body would be shaking and the tears would come out of his eyes due to the pain. So he'd be laying on the ground. However, even though that would be taking place, he wouldn't stop teaching us the Quran because his love of the Quran and his love of seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even in a situation like that, we could barely be conscious and speak. He would insist that we stay and we finish whatever we could finish from reading the Quran to him so that he could get the reward and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ithar, preferring others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and preferring the, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above the needs and the likes and desires and dislikes of our own soul is something that we need to push ourselves to do regularly. And one of the ways that we can make Ithar for the creation is to be from those who regularly look at the situation of Muslims regularly look at the videos that are sent by charities and that will bring softness to our hearts when we see our brothers and sisters suffering in the world we'd want to give them something even if it be only a pound we should give sadaqah even if it's only a pound or 50p we shouldn't withhold if we have the ability to do so and we should often read about the rewards of this ithar go back and watch the video again if we have to go back and read about ithar and about the virtues of giving sadaqah and uh, charity etc this will enable within us ourselves to have ithar and to always give even if we ourselves are in need of something um, we will become those people who are willing to give it to others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll stop here inshallah if there's any clarifications or questions on this topic of ithar then feel free